Welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, Prime Minister Nagamutu returns home. Opposition chief whip schooled on Exxon's agreement with government. Leguan gets ICT hub. This week's cabinet roundup and more after this. Here's an important message from the Ministry of Finance and the Ghana Revenue Authority. If you've never filed or paid your taxes or have deliberately not declared your true income and now you're worried that you'll be audited by the Guyana Revenue Authority, I have good news for you. The Ministry of Finance has announced a tax amnesty effective January 1 to September 30, 2018. So you can now pay all your outstanding income, property, corporate, withholding and capital gains taxes and get right with the GRA. Visit their office or call them at 227-6060, extension 1201 or 1204 today. Invest in your country. Pay your taxes. InfoHub begins with a report from Gabriela Patram, who was at a prayer breakfast this morning, which brought together the president, several ministers of government, and well-wishers. It was a welcome home event for Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, who returned today after recuperating in the U.S., following a successful heart bypass surgery. Hosted at the PM's residence, the prayer breakfast was attended by President David Granger, First Lady Ms. Sandra Granger, Ministers of the Government, Family and Friends, Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali, Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan, and Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman all expressed pleasure at the PM's return and recommitted to ensuring that his health and well-being are a top priority for the government. Prime Minister, I want to say to you, that you've got to take it one day at a time. We love you. We treasure you. <laughs> we treasure you. And we want to have you for a long, long time. The advantages of having you in our midst, Moses, the fact of having such erudite remarks forthcoming in Parliament and Cabinet, at our AFC meetings, management committee and national executive is an extraordinary thing. We welcome you back. We look forward to your presence in the house. And we say to your wife and family, we know that we have a duty to take care of him and we will not let you down. Prayers were offered up for the Prime Minister and family by Reverend John O. Smith, Shayak Mohil Hak and Pandit Chitram Puran. The Prime Minister, accompanied by his wife, Ms. Rosita Nagamutu, and their eldest daughter, Maria Nagamutu, arrived at the Cherry Dragon International Airport at 7.10 this morning. In February, a routine medical examination done in Guyana revealed that the Prime Minister had some cardiac issues and had to undergo the heart bypass surgery at a medical institution in the USA. Following the successful surgery, he spent recovery time at his family's residence. Gabriella Patram for InfoHub. InfoHub's Stacey Carmichael now brings us this week's Cabinet Roundup. President David Granger will be attending the 25th meeting of the Commonwealth Heads of Government, slated for April 16 to 20, 2018 in London. The head of state will be accompanied by Second Vice President and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Carl Greenwich, Director General Audrey Waddle, and Guyana's High Commissioner to London, Frederick Hamsley Case. This was announced today by Minister of State Joseph Harmon during a post-Cabinet media briefing. At the meeting, being held under the theme Towards a Common Future, President Granger will emphasize Guyana's role in and contribution to the green agenda of the Commonwealth. Guyana will therefore use the opportunity of the Heads of Government meeting to continue its leadership role in the establishment of the green agenda of the Commonwealth. And we do so as we seek to establish a green economy and green state as our model of development. Finance Minister Winston Jordan has presented an end-of-year outcome statement to the Cabinet, which has been approved and will be laid in the National Assembly. This is in keeping with a promise by the government to provide a final end-of-year statement that would reflect the actual figures for 2017. The macro-fiscal numbers contained in the national budget for 2018 were reflective of actual data, to October 2017 and projections for November and December 2017. The report will be subjected to further scrutiny at the upcoming International Monetary Fund IMF Article 4 consultations. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjatan reported on a visit by the Parliamentary Oversight Committee on the Security Sector to the Burima Waini Region, Region 1. This follows visits by President Granger where he outlined the frontline village policy and recent reports of armed gangs in the Cuyuni River that affected the work of Guyanese miners. Cabinet noted that the Guyana Defense Force 
and the Guyana police force had mounted high-level, high-ranking visits to the area in an approach which includes citizens, the Guyana Gold and Diamond Miners Association, the Ministry of Natural Resources, Corps of Wardens. Meanwhile, Minister Harmon said a board of inquiry has been launched into the recent shooting death of a young woman by her reputed husband, a senior officer of the Guyana Defense Force. The fact is that once you have officers um, and other ranks who bear weapons as part of their day-to-day -day activities, then some of the recommendations that you're making are the suggestions that you're making about training and about the the manner in which they go about doing their duty. I think these are credible and these are matters which the forces will have to take into consideration. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin yesterday during a meeting of the Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Foreign Affairs corrected Member of Parliament and Opposition Chief Whip Gail Teixeira that her government had, in fact, signed a production sharing agreement with ExxonMobil and partners in 1999. Details in this Zanil Williams report. Business Minister Dominic Gaskin, during the meeting of the Parliamentary Sectorial Committee on Foreign Affairs, set the record straight that the PPP government had signed a production sharing agreement and not an exploration agreement, as contended by MP and Chief Whip Gail Teixeira. A feisty exchange ensued after when Minister Gaskin pointed to the terms of the present agreement as opposed to what was signed in 1999 under the PPP government. If you seat. look at the agreement signed yeah, in 1999, it says specifically, this is a production sharing agreement. No, we didn't. We didn't that, have the law I, I can show, I can didn't show even you have the, the words written no, in no, no, the no, agreement no. No. signed by President Janet Jagan yeah, yeah, yeah. in 1999, okay, go and ahead. states specifically, and there was this no oil. is a 1999. sharing when agreement. Was oil the government undertook a review of the 1999 contract in 2016. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman has repeatedly pointed out that the government wishes to honor the sanctity of the agreement signed in 1999, hence the limited modifications of the contract. Meanwhile, in response to a question posed by opposition MP Nigel Darmwell, Minister Gaskin assured that the indigenous population will not be disadvantaged by the president's commitment to set aside a forest for conservation. The whole concept of a green state places um, value a value on conservation or preservation. And so we're not looking at protected areas as areas where there is or there will be no economic development. We're looking at protected areas as areas that come under a special regime which ensures the sustainable use of those lands. In April of 2016, at the historic signing of the Paris Agreement in New York, President David Granger committed to conserving 2 million hectares of forest, among other steps. Zanil Williams for Info Hub. Info Hub's Sinika Thorne now tells us that Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjatan has stated he will support the police's version of the seawall shooting until the findings of a coroner's inquest are revealed. Asked by the local media to explain his support of the police in the incident, the minister said, Simply because that's what you normally do. When there is an investigation as to a murder, what do you expect me to do? The police... You question the police investigation? You do not. Minister Ramjitan noted that a responsible government will attach credibility and reliability on its police investigators. Unless there's something so badly done or so egregious that you're going to question the police immediately. On March 15, Dexter Curtis, Kwame Asana and Errol Adams were shot and killed by police after an alleged shootout on the Seawall Road in Georgetown. Police say the exchange occurred following an intelligence-led operation to address the robberies of persons conducting transactions at banks. The men were trailed from a city bank. An eyewitness has since come forward, but doubt has been cast on his credibility. Minister Ramjatan said his support is behind the police, given their credibility and reliability. I don't want to go further, but you know these matters can have uh, a way with them and so on. But the trouble is, the coroner's inquest is going to find out even better. 
because there can be the witnesses being called there, and I hope that um, the coroner being the kind of investigator, they're not going to be afraid to come forward. All those witnesses who are allegedly um, eyewitnesses to the actual incident. Following a meeting of the National Security Committee, President David Granger ordered that the Guyana Police Force launch an investigation to determine the circumstances under which the suspects were shot and killed. Seneca Thorn for InfoHub. The National Data Management Authority, NDMA, which falls under the purview of the Ministry of Public Telecommunications, yesterday officially opened yet another Community Information and Communications Technology Hub this time on the island of Leguan in the Essequibo River. Stacey Carmichael was there and filed this report. Housed at the Leguan Community Center, the ICT hub is equipped with 15 laptop computers, which will be accessible to the public. This brings the total number of community ICT hubs across the country to 110. A target of at least 190 ICT hubs has been set for 2018. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes said this is in keeping with the government's commitment of ensuring all citizens have access to information and communications technology. She pointed out that access to the Internet can help all members of the community, particularly students and other persons engaged in academic pursuits. Whether you are a student, whether you are a woman starting a business, whether you are a mechanic that is providing repair services for auto automobiles, or for cars, and you want to know how to fix a particular model of a car, or you want to research a problem. If you have health issues, and you want to understand what is wrong, what the questions you could ask a doctor when you go to visit, the internet and the wide body of information on the internet allows you to develop as a person and to educate yourself. Director of Community Development and Social Management, Philip Walcott, commended all those who partnered with the authority to bring the hub to realization in just a few months. So in my brief remarks, I want to congratulate you on working to make your workstation, make your hub operational. We are, of course, happy to have provided the support. The Community ICT Hubs project was conceptualized as an effort of the Government of Guyana, a government program to provide ICT services to all citizens. The project focuses on advancing human development and empowerment and community development through community-based organizations. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. World Health Day will be observed on Saturday, April 7, under the theme Universal Health everyone, everywhere. The Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization will be collaborating with the Ministry of Public Health to host a health fair and exhibition at Durban Park. There will be a Zumba and aerobic session from 6 hours to 7 hours before the fair is formally opened at 9 hours. Officials of the Regional Democratic Council of Region 3 today failed to appear at a council meeting scheduled by Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan at the West Demerara Secondary School. Alexis Rodney has more for us. The meeting organized by the Ministry of Communities to discuss issues relating to local government was boycotted by most of the officials of the Essequiba Island West Demerara Regional Council. Only three showed up to hear from Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan. Minister Bulkan said he will accept the excuse the administration has provided, but they were not duly informed of the meet and said he will give them another opportunity in another three weeks' time. The ministry is prepared to give the IMC the benefit of the doubt that perhaps they may, with some justification, <laughs> wish to say that they should have been given a little bit more, a little longer notice in relation to today's engagement. And that being, that being the case, I am prepared to before the reschedule, the wider engagement that was envisaged or contemplated and to give the IBC a second opportunity. According to Minister Bulkan, notices for the meeting were received by officials, some traveling from as far as Leguan on Tuesday of this week. If on that second occasion, whatever is the level of participation, then I will certainly go into the wider message that I would like to deliver and to bring to organs and councils within this region. 
The day's engagement was designed as an interactive session with both regional officials and members of the Neighborhood Democratic Councils to allow for feedback and responses from the NDCs. While he has given the RDC the benefit of the doubt, Minister Bilkin said he will not prejudge the outcome of the next invitation to similar meet People's Progressive Party-controlled RDCs and NDCs, following a call by the Leader of the Opposition for Non-Cooperation, have not been attending government engagements and meetings. Alexis Rodney for Info. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye. Paying the right amount of tax helps provide a good credit rating. A good credit rating is a requirement for getting financing. You could use your good credit rating to get loans to expand your business, buy a house or car, or pay for your university tuition. Take advantage of the tax amnesty and pay no interest or penalties from now to June 30. Invest in yourself. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority.